Will democracy survive in the next couple of years? And essentially we are the same. And there are so many needs that Minnesota has. What people are saying they need right now. Access to democracy is made possible by donations from the following organizations. Thomson Reuters, a global company with expertise and insight to unravel complex situations in the areas of law, tax, compliance, government, and media. Their worldwide network of journalists and editors keep customers up to speed on relevant global events. Thomson Reuters, the answer company. Crutchfield Dermatology, a full-service treatment center in Medispa in Egan. Their goal is to help you look good and feel great with beautiful skin. With service built around courtesy, dignity, and respect, Mayo-trained Dr. Charles Crutchfield personally treats each patient and is acknowledged as one of the nation's best physicians. Firefly Credit Union, with locations throughout the Twin Cities, has proudly served Minnesotans since 1925. Firefly guides its members forward by delivering customized financial solutions to improve their lives in all aspects of banking. Firefly Credit Union, they light the way with life illuminated. Edina Eye, physicians and surgeons, a division of Twin Cities Eye Consultants, has proudly served the Twin Cities for more than 55 years. Now in seven convenient locations, using the most advanced technology combined with human touch, Edina Eye offers comprehensive services but dedicated specialists committed to excellence with innovative procedures and expertise for the most advanced eye care. Welcome. Access to Democracy Returns. Alan Miller with you. And I have to do a little bit of explanation before I introduce our first guest, uh, because our first sponsor many moons ago was a credit union called U.S. Federal Credit Union. And they morphed into uh, Firefly Credit Union. And two years ago, uh, Bill Raker retired and Dale Turner became the president and CEO of Firefly Credit Union. And Dale is with us today. First time guest, I wanna welcome him, but he's already a, a mover and a shaker and Firefly is going to become Truestone Credit Union in about nine days. So, uh, uh, Dale, welcome, and uh, we'll, we'll certainly enjoy listening to that story. Alan, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's a great Friday. Uh, it's, uh, as I say, uh, it, it's people like Firefly and now Truestone who keep us on the air to uh, pay the little bit, even though we're a volunteer operation, the little bit of expenses that we have. And uh, it's certainly something that's been going on for 22 years now, and I'm glad to have you on board. Uh, a little bit of background about Dale Turner and how he got to Firefly Truestone. Yeah, uh, I, had, uh, I had arrived in Minnesota in late 2018 uh, to become the president and CEO of, of Firefly, which is uh, as of legal day one, January 1st of, of 2021 here, we are now Truestone. Uh, prior to my arrival here, I actually had six years in Minnesota. I grew up in Indiana, uh, but um, left the beautiful state of Indiana in the Midwest uh, for uh, the West Coast for a little bit. I worked in uh, the West Coast in the credit union space, uh, originally started in the, in the banking space, moved to the credit union space, um, and then had the opportunity to come back to the Midwest and was super excited about that. Um, I've always uh, had a connection to Minnesota. I lived here for six years prior in my life, in my younger days and uh, knew that I wanted to get back to the Midwest and specifically Minnesota. And uh, Firefly uh, gave me that opportunity to get back and it's been, uh, it's been busy ever since, that's for sure. You say younger days, I just want you to know that I have shoes older than you, so. <laughs> <laughs> I did just turn 40 years old. Um, so I'm pretty, uh, pretty excited about that, the big 4-0, but uh, Alan, you're gonna have to vet me on some of the later years and give me some advice. Well. Uh, we'll, we'll take you down that road, uh, happily so. Uh, now, you were with a very large credit union in San Diego. And how did you choose Firefly to further your career? I, I, I was. I was with San Diego County Credit Union. At, at one time, uh, San Diego was, San Diego County was probably number 
number 11 or number 12 in the nation from asset size. Um, I, uh, I was there for six years, uh, five years working under, uh, all six years working under um, Terry Halleck, which is just an amazing uh, CEO in the credit union space. She was the CEO of Golden One Credit Union. Uh, she was on the East Coast for a little bit and then is still uh, continuing uh, San Diego Credit Union. And they're, um, I think they just crossed 10 billion. So they're still significantly um, from a size standpoint, one of the largest credit unions in the nation. Um, I, looked at, I looked at Firefly and I, I was blessed enough and fortunate enough that perhaps maybe, maybe other people weren't answering the phone, but I, I had a, a few opportunities um, uh, to be blessed with. And I knew that Firefly was the fit, the, the people, the, uh, the mission, the strategy uh, that I love from the board of directors, uh, really bringing member first and, and really focusing on the consumer perspective of better products and services. Uh, really resonated with me. And um, I, I love the credit union space and I was excited to get back to Minnesota and especially continued to, uh, especially focused on continuing this uh, mission of, of focusing on consumers. And Firefly has uh, always been a really consumer oriented and charitable oriented organization. Uh, certainly, uh, I might mention that uh, Sharon and I just got our new Truestone credit cards this week. So, uh, what? Well, well, how did it go? How how the tra have you have you registered and and uh, connected everything seamlessly? I'd love not, to hear that. That's great to hear. Not a problem. Not a problem. You know, Alan, that's our focus. It's about frictionless experiences for our consumers to make sure they get the products and services they need from the financial side. Now, Firefly grew into a billion-dollar credit union. Truestone is also a billion dollar credit union. So take us through how that transition has taken place since you became the CEO. You know, I, I give a lot of credit to, first and foremost, Bill Raker, uh, the previous CEO of Firefly and previously US Federal, had a couple decades under his belt and uh, really led the organization. And though I didn't get to spend a whole lot of time with uh, Mr. Raker, um, I, I knew about the organization prior to its transformation into Firefly and um, knew exactly where, where they were heading as it relates to consumer focus. Um, when we uh, ended the year of 2020, um, and that was about two years under my belt, I, I give a lot of credit to the board of directors uh, on both sides, Truestone and Firefly, for saying we can do better. We can bring more value to consumers. Both organizations, in all candor, perform very well financially. Uh, both organizations uh, led the way um, in offering some of the best products and services throughout the state of Minnesota and Wisconsin, including uh, and um, what we both came together, both organizations came together and said, I think we can do even further to uh, move the needle of progress as it relates to consumer banking products. Um, that being said, uh, we uh, closed the transaction of both organizations coming together. We have uh, 23 branches throughout the, both Minnesota and Wisconsin now. It literally doubled our access uh, for our consumers to, to be able to access those branches, more than doubled on the Firefly side. Uh, we move forward with the Truestone uh, branding and structure um, with some marketing and, and branding research that we did um, and, and knew that was going to be the right, the right move forward. And uh, right now we're seeing results already. We're only um, about, uh, what is it, 50 days or so past legal day one. We're about uh, nine days away from operational day one. And uh, bringing, that just means bringing all the systems and technology together. And that will allow the consumers to really focus on uh, what, what matters most to them, which is getting the best services from the banking side and getting the best products and services overall from the banking and finance uh, perspective. How to be an awesome job in this day of uh, really IT to bring these two organizations together. And uh, you are going to step in now as the president and CEO of both. Where is the headquarters going to be for Truestone? So I'm, I'm happy to share that we have kept the headquarters in Minneapolis. We have our primary location uh, and our headquarters, uh, our registered ed headquarters in Plymouth. And we have an administrative office in Burnsville. Um, so we have significant uh, uh, count as it relates to employees and in, in the locations. The, the mass majority of our employees are in Minneapolis here with four branches in Wisconsin as well. And you combined also the assets of the two organizations. So this makes you one of the biggest in the state of New York. Uh, New York, I'll be, I'll be all right. Uh, can't get the New Yorker out of the New Yorker. No worries uh, at all. The state of Minnesota. 
Uh, we might be one of the largest in New York as well, but I think we're the I think we're the second largest in the state of Minnesota as it relates to credit unions, and we're we're the top 100 uh, as it relates to in the nation as it relates to asset size. We're about 3.6 billion um, in assets right now. Now, did you have any problems when you combined the number of offices with overlap, where some offices are located of both organizations in the same you know community? You know, what, what made this uh, transaction considerably um, resourceful and um, I think desirable for both the consumer side and the organizational side was the fact that we did not have considerable duplicative oversights of offices. So as you look at the branch layout, um, there is not a uh, considerable excess in, in overlap. Um, what that allows us to do is just increase the access from a location perspective. And I'll give you one example to that. Um, prior to the merger, Firefly's branches from a consumer perspective, we had about 55 to 60% of our consumers on the Firefly side um, within five miles of a branch location. When we added uh, both uh, branch location networks together, the Truestone and the Firefly side to become one Truestone, um, 80% of our members of Firefly, legacy Firefly moving to the Truestone side, 80% of those uh, members now have a branch within five miles. Just one primary example of providing access to our consumers, as well as not looking to close any uh, locations because we didn't have any branches uh, across the corner from one another or, or, or in close vicinity um, of one another. Now, crossing the state line into Wisconsin, did that pose any particular problems? Uh, it's not as though it's just two Minnesota organizations merging, but you have, you have that also to deal with. It's, that's a great question. And I, I would assume that besides the fact of some Packers fans and Viking fans, besides that issue, do you think, Alan, is that the, we want to cover a different topic besides that one? Well, because we've got a lot of Packers fans and we've got a lot of Vikings fans. That's probably the only major issue that we had. You know, there are a lot of Packer fans right here in Minnesota. Uh, that's true. An amazing number of them, uh, but they don't have the stadium that we have. Uh, <laughs> as you could see, uh, in that frozen game a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> but that, that being said, uh, did regulations cause a big problem in that regard? You know, both, uh, both organizations were federally, um, in, in federal oversight, so they're federally chartered. Um, they're obviously both are under the oversight of NCUA, the regulatory bodies. Um, but what, what we really looked at when the organizations came together really early on to even start scoping about this project and looking at the project itself and saying, do these organizations fit well together? And what is the value truly to consumers? That was one significant item that we had to look at and say, what makes sense for future growth and the current um, the consumer base? So we changed from a federally chartered uh, to a state chartered credit union. We are uh, state chartered within the state of Minnesota. Um, that allowed us really so, some more flexibility as it relates to future growth. Um, it also um, saved us a little bit of money too on, on, on some things from a regulatory cost perspective. Um, but overall, um, the regulatory groups were very supportive of the organizations coming together when we looked at the, the proof of concept and then leading forward on the synergies that we would gain um, by really providing better products, uh, even lower, lower price products and services to the consumer base. Um, so the, the regulatory oversight were actually very overwhelmingly positive as it relates to the transaction and helped us facilitate it. And frankly, from a timing perspective, we moved the needle probably quicker than any other credit union merger in the last five to 10 years. Uh, we were able to get the transaction done um, within about nine months, and then operational day one would be uh, the following two and a half months uh, from January 1 to March 1st. So uh, that's a pretty accelerated timeline. We're careful with that timeline. It's not about rushing forward. It's about ensuring that we get the, uh, the consumer perspective correct, make sure that we have the least amount of friction and it be as seamless as possible to the consumers. Because frankly, Alan, it's not you and your wife's uh, issues or problems if we have a vendor gap or we're trying to rush through. You're just looking for the best, I would assume, the best product and services that you've uh, grown accustomed to and you're looking for those best priced products as possible so we try to avoid you getting in the in the ricks of certainly it certainly found them with firefly uh, u.s federal before it and uh, we're looking forward to that continuing down the road now uh one of the things that i really wanted to have you tell people 
uh, which we know as members and actually owners, which people uh, don't know, uh, why a credit union instead of a bank? That, that's, a, that's a great question. Well, a, as you are an owner of a, of a credit union, it's uh, the, the similarities of ownership um, are somewhat similar. Instead of a stockholder, you're a shareholder. Um, so instead of being maybe Wells Fargo or U.S. Bank and, and owning a stock, you actually own a vested interest in the credit union. Uh, the great thing about democracy and a credit union democracy is you get to vote on uh, some of the actions. It, we, we received an overwhelming positive uh, vote as it relates to the, the, the move forward. We focus not on profits, um, but rather we focus on the people side, really. So um, though, though it really is... Um, Though it really is a commodity business, we're looking at products and services. Banks and credit unions are different in the fact that Truestone, uh, once Firefly, Truestone is not only just a supplier of commodities. Um, we're more than simply a product provider or a service provider. We really create emotion in the experience. Our purpose is consumer focused, not profit driven. So we take that purpose, we take that need. Alan, we take that sincerity, that compassion, that empathy, uh, connecting with the consumers and educating. And it's all about those things coming together to create a company with a soul, not a company that's focused on shareholder value, but consumer value and bringing you the best products and services. And that's, that, that company coming together as a soul uh, is a critical piece of the equation. And as an owner, uh, which we all are, who are members of credit unions, that's very important to us because uh, it's not necessarily the bottom line that's important. It's the services that we get from the organization. And we get the personal services from a credit union that you can't get from one of the big banks that are really much more interested in the big picture rather than the individual, in my estimation. And I think that that's very important. It's one of the reasons that we are credit union members. I, I like to say, Alan, that credit unions, Truestone itself, are we are successful um, by what we accomplish with our members versus what we sell to our members. Now, credit unions are actually run by boards of directors. Yes, so sir. talk about how that structure is set up and uh, how it's followed through in terms of elections, in terms of one becoming a member of a board of directors and so on. Yeah, so uh, I think it's a good example of the transaction actually coming together, the merger of these two great organizations coming together to become one Truestone. Um, we had um, nine board members on the Firefly side. Uh, Truestone had seven board members on, on their side. We, uh, we combined together with uh, a total of 13 board members, uh, seven from the legacy Truestone side, six from the legacy Firefly side to become uh, 13 board members to lead the way as our continued uh, organization. Um, we have elections uh, every single year. We have an annual meeting that comes up. Um, we advocate participation from our uh, shareholders that come in, uh, not stockholders, but we have our members come in and uh, it's great to have them participate and uh, continue to drive focus of, of what we're trying to deliver here uh, every single day to our consumers and our members. So uh, it's a great opportunity. It's a volunteer opportunity. We like to joke with our board members. I like to joke with our board members. They, they spend a lot of time, effort, and energy, many, many hours, hundreds of hours, some of them, um, as it relates to the time and dedication that they've given to this organization. And it is a, a volunteer um, opportunity. Similar to your organization, Alan, a lot of volunteer work goes in to create some really amazing things. Yeah, that's what I, I wanted people to understand that these board members, you are actually an employee of the credit union in, in effect, but these yes, board sir. members give of their own time to make this operation work. And obviously uh, they gave a lot of time in the decision to move Firefly to Truestone. We've got a lot of selfless volunteers that work really hard that care about the state of Minnesota, care about Wisconsin, and really want to push our community forward to have better banking products and services, that's for sure. And here we are on February 19th, just coming out of horrendous weather, but only nine days away until you become, become Truestone, period. 
Yeah, we, we actually became, I mean, the technical legal transaction happened January 1st. So we are one legal entity. Operational day one is 3-1-2021. So just coming up real short, that operational day one brings all the systems together, uh, brings all the connectivity together. Um, so the, the actual transaction legally has been completed, but the, the integration itself, you're, you're right on, is, is just a few days away. Are we having a big party? Well, we got to land the plane first and the, and the wheels got to be on the ground, but we're, oh. we're very optimistic that uh, we have all the integration steps in place. And then after, uh, after a seamless transition, making sure our members are happy with, uh, with this coming together, making sure we get all the, all the debit and credit cards registered and, and everything uh, in, in the flow, then um, there, there could be a party in, in play, that's for sure. But uh, let, let's make sure we land the plane first. No high fives at halftime is what I like to see, Alan. Well, good for you in that regard, uh, and uh, it's good to hear. Uh, so we talked about regulatory compliance and the, the fact that uh, we're now a state organization. Uh, really, what's down the road for Truestone uh, as you see it? Yeah, I, our, our goal... Um... Our goal is to continue to try to and move that needle as it relates to products and services. So we're uh, just aggressively attentive to what our consumers want and need, whether that be business products, consumer products, um, faster access to money, easier access to money, more uh, affordability as it relates to rates on the loan side, or more um, more increase of interest rates on the uh, deposit side or CD and, and money market side. So this synergy really allows us to refine the back office operations, ensure that there's more access than ever with a multitude of doubling our branch access size and really driving forward the value that perhaps some banks aren't able to meet from the retail side. So if you need an auto loan, you need a, a personal secured or you need a mortgage loan, um, that's what we're what that's what we really are in our wheelhouse. And that's what we're really good at. And um, we, we see that continuing. And uh, if, as we move the needle forward, we see the digital progression being even even quicker than ever. So people are able to access their their money right on their right in their phone, able to move their money. And um, we see growth ahead. Um, we, we doubled in size in a matter of literally a uh, just a year, um, we, we, see that, uh, we see that progressing even further as it relates to, to, to our progress and growth. And I, I will say from my experience uh, of what people need, if you need a friend, uh, at least my experience with, with the credit unions is that the personnel there is standing ready to be a friend of you, to help you through whatever your situation may be. <clears throat> and I think that makes a big difference with that and the impersonal nature of many banks. I mean, you know, you don't walk into a supermarket to go do your banking. Uh, at least I don't. And uh, it, it's an entirely different welcoming feeling when you walk into the credit union. You, you, Alan, you nailed it. it. A lot of people think it's back to the point of commodity, right? People first think, well, I just need a, I need a checking or I need a savings. Well, you, you really don't. What, what we're trying to do is get out of that supplier of commodities, that simple product focus. We're talking about an emotional experience with money. Uh, money is very emotional to people. And um, that, that's when people connect with others to say, you know, I've got a purpose and I've got a need. And there's sincerity and compassion in that. There's empathy on on items where I don't understand a product or service. And that's the, that's the differentiator for us. We have team members our employees really connect with the individuals, not to sell them a product, but find out where they're trying to go and help them through that progress to say, what do you need and how can we get you there? Not sell you a widget or sell you a product. That's not, that's not our interest. Our success is found by connecting to consumers, understanding their needs, and then delivering on that in a sincere way. And let's talk about what you, what you do. Checking account, you have it. Savings account, you have it. Auto loans, you have it. Mortgages, you have it. Representing business, you have it. Representing charitable organizations, you have it. Uh, what is it that you don't have? That's, that's a great question. Uh, we, we look at the demands of the consumer. We don't have Bitcoin. We're not doing Bitcoin. <laughs> so uh, that's been uh, hot in the news uh, most, late, uh, most recently. 
um, we try to keep it to basics. Um, consumers um, are able to, to do what they need to do daily, weekly, monthly um, with their family, um, with their friends through um, basic monetary vehicles, whether that be checking savings and the like, um, whether it's buying their first mortgage or if they're a veteran, buying their mortgage through VA or, or FHA if they have limited cash down. Um, it, it's, it's focusing on the basics of what consumers truly need, listening to them. It doesn't have to be complex. Um, sometimes it can be. We try, we, try to, we try to balance that and say, let us walk you through this because we're the experts. Um, we'll continue to keep our eye on, on what, things, uh, what things are happening, but um, we're not going to sell. Uh, what, what I like to say about TrueStone is we're not going to sell you a product you don't need or charge you fees uh, for services that you don't use. Um, it, it doesn't make any sense to us. For us, it's about really focusing on the consumer and making sure that we're making progress together. And I should mention that you also have ATMs, which certainly are important to people. You have drive-through banking which is important to people. And are the hours going to change uh, with the two organizations being merged? The hours have been expanded. Um, Firefly and TrueStone um, looked at uh, both the hours and we became the new TrueStone. Um, we expanded the hours slightly on the Saturday hours. Um, I will also say that we have more than 60,000 ATMs. Um, that is more than Wells Fargo, US Bank and Bank of America combined. So uh, we have more access than ATMs and some of the largest banks in the entire nation. Um, we also have expanded hours that we just rolled out when we brought those two together. Um, so we're trying to provide as much access as possible for the consumers to get them what they need, which is simply access to their funds. Well, I'm glad that you liked Minnesota and that you wanted to come back here. I know a lot of us move here because of the weather and uh, certainly uh, I don't think that was the reason that you came back here, but I can see from your energy and your input uh, that you're really enthused about this merger as we are. And looking down the road, we hope that not only is it a good thing, but we hope that uh, it lasts in terms of your relationship with access to democracy uh, and uh, down in the future. And you know, one of, one of our favorite people is Marty Kelly, who uh, is a terrific stand-up comic, as well as being a, a really good financial executive. And uh, you, you have inherited him. So uh, we are very fortunate to have Mr. Kelly as our executive vice president of marketing and branding for TrueStone. Um, we, we've got some great talent on the executive side, including Marty. That's absolutely for sure. We've been talking with Dale Turner who's the new CEO of TrueStone Credit Union. And uh, Dale, hope you'll be back again and certainly look forward to the future. Thank you for having me, Alan. I appreciate it. Thank you.